self-storage is big business and the answer to our overcrowded homes. <gasps> All right, so... But some have taken their storage hoarding too far. Oh, my God. Hanging on to things they don't see or need. All my life is in that storage. And it's costing them a fortune. We've had the storage for over six years now, and we've probably spent almost £20,000. I'm Maggie McKenzie, and I'm an expert in clearing junk and people's excess baggage. God, that's hideous. <laughs> Put it in the bin. I'll be asking hoarders to unlock the doors of their units. Oh, I was a cool dude. Empty out their stash. I had to have these boots hand painted. And choose to keep it. I'm feeling a little emotional. Skip it or sell it. Our antiques expert will then pull out any hidden gems. I would give you a cheque today of £18,000 for this plate. Yes, that's what I like to see. To take to auction and make some hard cash. Today's hoarders are no strangers to storage. I've had many units in my lifetime. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> But can I convince them to start a new chapter? Books, 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 books. Books. And make this a decluttering story. Hang on. So how tall were your ceilings? Oh, well, some of them were 14, 16 foot. With a cash-happy ending. Is it happy with that? Yeah. yeah Let's hope the person that. who gave you that won't be watching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Storage Hoarders. Welcome to Storage Hoarders. I'm helping two hoarders confront their supposedly short-term solution and decide whether to keep, skip or sell their long-forgotten possessions. Our first storage hoarder is uptown Irish girl Caroline Smurfit. Together with daughter-in-law Charlie, she hopes to shake her storage for good. Caroline has spent over three grand in the past couple of years and is no stranger to spending cash on her stash. So where did it all begin? Well, as a family, we all came over to England in 1987. As I moved from Surrey to Berkshire, to Sussex, to London, there was always storage involved. Caroline has recently moved to a Desres part of London's Fulham, the birthplace of Harry Potter spellbinder Daniel Radcliffe. When this lady of the manor downsized to a townhouse, she was forced to rehome much of her expensive furniture in temporary storage. I've got a couple of screens, the altar table, Cherrywood altar table. Um, I've got the Parisian gilt chandeliers. But this temporary solution is now a reluctant permanent fixture. I'd be thrilled if something could go, finally, and I could cut another unnecessary bill out of my life. So what does Charlie think of her mother-in-law's situation? Caroline does have impeccable taste. She has a lovely eclectic style and buys lots of beautiful pieces of furniture and has succumbed to storage because she's moved house quite a few times. I think Caroline definitely needs some help. I think she needs some objective opinions to help her go through the items and work out whether she can perhaps uh, either sell something or whether she could put it in a house again. Charlie wants Caroline to get rid, but isn't sure it's going to be a walk in the park. I think Caroline might be quite sentimental with certain pieces. I'm going to be the hard, tough one. And I think when she sees it all again, she may well realise that she wants to keep some of it. So there might be a slight battle. Charlie is a thrower out by nature. And um, she's very good at chucking things out when they need to be chucked. I've had storage for about three years, and I feel that's far too long. So 20 years, I think that's calling for an intervention of a massive proportion. Can I get Caroline to shed her past pieces and be rid of storage once and for all? Nelvis, which of you is the hoarder here? I'm the hoarder. You are? I am the hoarder. How many units do you have here? I've only got the one unit here, one but unit. I've had many units in my lifetime. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> when did you last see the items? Two years ago. Two years ago? Well, that's when I started at this storage unit. I see. So, so presumably you haven't seen any of this stuff in storage? I haven't seen anything, no. I guess I met Caroline about eight or so years ago, but I think maybe... I don't know whether you've been sending storage, so. sending items off to storage over the past eight years? You bet. Well, there we go. Is there anything that you're particularly looking forward to seeing? Well, my altar table. 
I bought this table in London, brought it back to Dublin, where I'd lived very happily in a big house there, came back to London. It didn't fit in any of the houses, so it's been in and out and in and out and in and out, in the dark, all by itself. So You haven't seen this altar table? I haven't seen it, but I'm dying to see it. No! I've had so no, much about no, it. No. So, I get the impression it's all good items in there to be sold, is that right? Well, I think there must be someone who'd like it. But, mind you, nowadays, it's nothing to do with what you spent originally buying it. I just can't wait to see inside your unit. Looks like we've got an interesting day ahead. Let's go and yes. do it. Let's go, OK. I want to help furnish Caroline with cash in exchange for the clutter. Next up are music lawyer Tim Smith and wife Margaret. They've been happily married for 17 years, but the past six years has seen them splash out around £20,000 on hoarding items and storage. So how did they get here? We moved out of a five-bedroom house um, and the house we were going to buy fell through. Unable to find their ideal house, they decided to temporarily move into an American trailer and put their belongings into short-term storage. It ended up taking two years to find a house and then we had a lot of work done to it. So uh, in the end we were living in the caravan for about two and a half years. Eventually the happy hoarders moved to their dream home in Caterham, Surrey a commuter town on the outskirts of London where they also build the world-famous Caterham sports car. But six years on, and many of their belongings are still living in storage. To begin with, it was necessary, so there was, there was you know, two and a half years, it was something we couldn't avoid. We, we, we hadn't planned on keeping a storage unit for that long, but, but we couldn't really do much about it. But the fact Tim is a self-confessed hoarder has not helped things. There are too many things that I keep that probably are fairly useless, but I just like them. It doesn't necessarily have to be because I think they're valuable. It's just something interesting or something unusual about them that I would keep things. So I guess, yes, I am a bit of a hoarder. And Tim is not the only one with a penchant for the past. I think we're both hoarders, um, although it's a bit hard to admit that you're a hoarder. Margaret is mother hen who loves looking after the grandchildren and all the stuff that goes with them. I keep things from my children and it has worked because they keep passing the things on to their children so it obviously is working. There is a theme to my madness. The family keep Margaret busy and so does Tim's passion for music. He's a muso fanatic who manages to combine work with play, seeing lots of live bands. So these are some of my um, passes from gigs that I went to. I used to go to a lot of gigs with my clients. But the monthly storage reminder is never music to his ears. Well, when the bill comes in every month, I do go, oh, yes, I must do something about this. The couple have plans for any money they save to be spent on the garden. But can these two stubborn storers ever find the time to take stock and confront the clutter? We really need someone to push us into sorting out our storage unit. We have to get rid of the things that are in there that need to be got rid of, and we just have to sort it out. Hmm, I think I know just the person to help. Hello, you two. Which one is the hoarder? Um, well, I'd say both of us are, actually. Okay. We hoard different things. What are you guilty of hoarding? Books. Books? <laughs> yes, definitely books. Uh, books. Um, and Stop. records and things. What sort of books? Maps. Books with maps in, old railway books. That kind of thing. Got you. I'm getting the picture. And what about you, Margaret? What's your...? Children's things. Toys and... Rubbish, really. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, in fact, you're sorted with your house. You've got enough stuff. So the stuff in the unit is actually superfluous. Um, yeah, a lot of it is superfluous. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So you've had this unit for how long? Six years. Six years? Yeah, over six years, actually. Golly. And how much does it cost a month? Do we have, uh, 300 and something. <gasps> 306. Do you think there's anything of value in there? No. Well, depends what you mean by value. The mm. pinball machine's got a value. A pinball machine? And some of the records might have some value. So, you're looking forward to this clear Definitely. out? Yeah, Definitely. very yeah, much. Great. Yes, so, am I? Fit. Let's go and do okay. it. Okay. We've met our supposed short term storage hoarders. Now it's time to open up their units and see exactly what they've been hiding. Coming up, someone needs to be put through the mill. Look, here's a book that I can't be doing without. Practical windmilling today. I that is exactly no, the kind right. of book no. that I wouldn't... I won't argue with you on that. While Caroline remembers a special friend... Oh, look, I'd forgotten all about Doris. ..and both hope to cash in the clutter at auction. 
That's great. That certainly That's is. Brilliant. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I'm helping two hoarders finally free themselves from big storage bills. Earlier, we met Caroline, a lady with expensive taste for large furniture, who, having now downsized from her country pile, has to keep the furniture piled up in storage. And Legal Eagle Tim Smith and his wife Margaret, who have spent around £20,000 on storage over the last six years. They want to clear out, cash in and come up rosy, putting any money they make to good use in the garden. Later, our antiques expert will inspect the hordes of artefacts to reveal any hidden value that could coin it in at auction. First up, it's time for Caroline and Charlie to open up the unit. OK, look in here. <gasps> oh, dear. Right. Caroline is opening the door on the grand old days. Locked away are reminders of a life living in large country houses. And straight away, she's greeted by an old friend. Oh, look, I'd forgotten all about Doris. Oh, this is Doris. Doris. This is Doris, my this... dodo, look. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> What's she's this, been with then? Me since about 1979. Where Hello, did you get Doris. Doris from? I bought Doris in Pimlico. Anthony Redmile, about my, the late 70s. If all this clutter is to be made extinct, they need to get sorting, which is already revealing a lavish past. That's pretty. What is it? Would that well, been... with some religious thingy, rose to its potential. Oh! Oh! Oh, great! <laughs> oh, my God. Here is the altar table. Oh, my gosh, I have to see this. That will alter my life. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. There are loads of memories locked away here, so can Caroline part with her flamboyant past? Hi, ladies! Look, Hello. there it is! Oh, my there goodness! It is. Oh, it's brown. huge! Well, it's not as tall, you see. You can't put that... And well. also, I bet it's no. really heavy. <gasps> hey, you've got no. some neat stuff! Yeah, I know. What is this? A French <laughs> chandelier. Oh it was God. a gas-lit oh, one, and, so now, and now it's, I, we electrified it. And I've got... I know I have glass. That's amazing. Oh, maybe it's in the box over here, the, 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 the bulb. Oh, so they have neat. been in a couple of houses. Oh, oh I've got... Oh, ah. this? Oh, that, that is the barley sugar thing, so oh. it goes up to the ceiling and oh then it attaches. Hang on. So how tall were your ceilings? Oh, well, some of them were 14, 16 foot. So it sounds like a very grand house you were living in. Well, it was a very pretty Georgian house. And it went... They went very well in the house, in the dining room and in the drawing room. They were, so they were matching as you went through to the drawing room. So, yeah. so were the rooms very large? They were, and lovely high ceilings, mm. big windows. You know, the good, typical Georgian house. Mm. But you know what, ladies? Mm -hmm. You're getting on great. I'm going to leave you to it. And when I come okay. back, I want everything out of the storage unit. Yeah, is that all right? Yes. OK. okay. <laughs> right. Caroline's had many of these items stored away for years. So can Charlie persuade her to part with them now and clear her unit for good? Next, it's time for Tim and Margaret to face the music. Their so-called temporary storage has cost them nearly £20,000. It's been a while since we've been here. This unit is crammed full of items they've not seen or needed for the past six years. And straight away, it feels like half the clutter should be in a library. Books, 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 books. Books. Oh, how mad. <laughs> I can't believe it's so much stuff. Um, All I can see is books and more books. I want these hardback hoarders to get decisive and dig through the stash if they want to clear out and raise some cash for their garden makeover. You've got quite a fair amount of stuff, haven't you? Ooh. Yes, we have. You know what? I think we just need to get going. So this is part of the Skelex trick, which is down here. Oh, right. Oh, it's massive, yeah. isn't it? So was, yeah. did that belong to the boys? Yes, yes it And did, they used yeah. it? It used to go around the whole of the ground floor of the house. Really? Mm -hmm. And they don't want it anymore? No. Already, Margaret's love for hanging on to the kids' things is coming to light. So Tim and Margaret are underway sorting the boys' toys from their little library. To help our hoarders clear their units, I want them to sort their possessions into three categories. Keep it for the items they really do love, skip it for all those unwanted pieces, and sell it for the bits that could bring in some cash. I've also included a charity bin for those items too good to chuck. 
It's time to get sorting. That's definitely going to be rubbish. I've forgotten all about that. I want our storage hoarders to get decisive and sort through every item in just three hours. So I've organised some helping hands and found them a space to spread all their items out. Tim and Margaret have an alarming load to sort. Their stash reveals everything from large pieces of furniture to loads of small boxes. Caroline's hoard comprises a large selection of fine furniture and classy clutter. All are reminders of previous houses with big rooms and the space to accommodate. Right, Hi. so it's all down here. Let's have a look. Will she be able to forget the past and move on to a storage-free future? Uh, what's in here, games? We used to play a lot of games. With no time to lose, Tim's getting stuck in. Here is a game from my childhood. Rail race around Britain. He suddenly transported back to his youth. Nessie Hunt, which is a game of in Scotland. My parents' old Scrabble. Visit the chief town in the bulb growing district. See, this is how I learnt all my geography, because my parents would then... My mother, actually, would then say, that's Spalding. Mum taught him well, but now I need to crack the whip and teach him this clear out is not just a game. Right, how are you doing with sorting things out? Um, not too bad. It's an awful lot of books. To me, those are nice objects. It's 1843, that is. 43, that's right. Couldn't be the one after 170 years to get rid of a... No. Oh, do you know what? No. I think you could be that pioneer. <laughs> Look, here's a book that I can't be doing without. Practical windmilling today. I agree that is with you. exactly no, the kind right. of book no, that I wouldn't... I won't argue with you on that. Hi, what's this? What's this? It's a book about football in Albania. So football for example, in Albania? Yeah. God, you actually paid money for this. I did. Uh, no, it's very interesting. No, right, I'm going to keep it. Let's not waste any more time because Correct. I've lost that one. Tim and Margaret just can't let go. I've got to get them to turn the page and focus on getting rid of this waste of space that has so far cost about 20 grand. This is pathetic. It's going to be a really long one. Oh, my goodness. Books, books and more books. Come on, we need to get get moving with these books. It's just... Oh, what's that? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Tim lives and breathes music, and this box of records is just the tip of his vinyl iceberg. But as he no longer has a record player, perhaps it's time they went. I would need to go through them, but I would not necessarily say I have to keep every single one of these records. Tim has been collecting records since his youth and thinks there may be some rarities among them, but would like a second opinion. So I've arranged for him to meet record specialist Mark Burgess to see if he's been sat on any valuable golden oldies. This is the first EP that Rickliffe Richard did, and he did it with his band The Drifters. So there's yeah. four tracks on here, presumably including Living Doll, yeah. which is obviously one of his more famous ones. Um, and this was actually came out in 1959, I believe, very early on, when he was considered to be the English Elvis Presley, wasn't he? <laughs> Record collecting is a passion for a lot of people, and there are lots of rare ones to look out for, like first pressings, limited editions, coloured vinyl, special sleeves, the desirability of the record, and early pressings of a band that went on to make it big. This is a Beatles album. It was a compilation album um, on the Apple label, which is the label that the Beatles set up for themselves. You can see the um, Apple logo on there. They had a cut apple on one side and a whole apple on the other. Now, interestingly, this album was called Hey Jude originally. Mm. Um, but for some reason, on the, the first pressings, they called it the Beatles again which they then changed for all subsequent pressings. So we know that this is one of the very original versions actually pressed up in 1970. The first pressing of Please Please Me by the Beatles in 1963 is considered the most collectible Beatles album, as only 900 were reported to have been pressed with a black and gold label rather than a yellow and black label. So has Tim been sat on a Beatles rarity all these years? So, um... What would you think something like this would be worth then? Well, this, uh, despite this being the original copy of this, yeah. the Beatles were known for selling many millions of albums. Of so there are a lot of these about, uh, and it was a compilation album rather than an original album. Yeah. So again, that sort of takes away from the value a bit. But I would say this was worth about £10. OK. Well, so, yeah. I might hand on to it. Yeah. <laughs> £10 may not seem like a lot of money. I wonder if Sir Cliff can top that. 
Well, this being an original Cliff and the Drifters yeah. single, there are still quite a few Cliff Richard fans out there who desire the, uh, the original copies, particularly in good condition. People pay a premium for that. So I would say in this sort of condition, which is very nice, this would be worth somewhere around £30. Okay. So That's quite nice. Which, Bit better there. Yes, okay. <laughs> Not doing too badly. Quite nice, but I don't think Tim will be going on a summer holiday at that price. So, I guess the question is, are you interested in selling these? Um, I was interested in getting the value, but I think I'll hold on to them for now. But thank you very much for giving me the information and the valuation. I think this is another example that Tim finds it hard to let go. But it does go to show record collecting is one of those things you should do for love and not for money. Meanwhile, back at the unit, Caroline is facing up to an extravagant hoard of memories. But can Charlie help her part with a sentimental past? That's a definite auction piece for me. You could have that as a bedside table, or you could put your drinks on that. Well, that's what I used to do in, in, is in it? Sussex. The one thing that I find really striking is the screen over there. It is beautiful. That's it absolutely is beautiful. amazing. It is very pretty. That was in my... Sounds very smart. Georgian dining room at one stage, my drawing room in Dublin, and they were the first things, the altar table and the screen. So it was very exciting buying these mm. things in London and bringing them back to Dublin. I remember opening up the box, you know, the big box arrived on the lawn and... So, yeah, there's great sentiment. Seeing all her items again is clearly unlocking fond memories for Caroline. Memories of her family growing up in large country houses. I think Caroline needs a reminder of the job in hand. Tell me what that picture is of the <laughs> painting over there. That's Charlie's husband to me. Little did I know he turned out to be a lawyer and my daughter Victoria there, an actress. So they were about 10 and 12 at the time. Uh -huh. And that was my view outside. The Just sea. from outside, on the other side of the window, you yes. had the sea. Yeah. How lovely. And the rock zone. So, yes, it was very special. So is this, um, what's this here? Is this come that, grand footstool? That, yeah, no, it was in the morning room in another house in Surrey. She's that... so posh with her morning room, her drawing no, well, well, room, some her of dining Chinese room. room. Now, now I'm back to basics. I'm back to real basics. The clock is ticking for our storage hoarders, but there's just enough time for one final push. I'm not quite sure that anything else can be skipped. I think you're absolutely right. They've stared downsizing in the face to put a conclusion on the clutter. And I think we're done. I think yeah. that's it. Skip. OK. Keep and sell. Caroline and Charlie have pulled off a class act. They've sorted everything neatly into piles, including an impressive sell pile. And it might have been a bit of a struggle, but Tim and Margaret have finally sorted their hoard. And I've spotted a rather special item Tim is happy to let go of. The pinball machine. How long have you had this for? Um, I've had it since 1993, I think, or 1994, something like that. We used to have it in the garage at the old house. Mm -hmm. Boys used to play with it, I used to play with it. No idea if it still works. And where did you buy it from? Uh, it was an auction. It was a specialist auction of pinball machines. Uh -huh. And how much did you pay for it? I think it was about £700. Uh -huh. I'd love to know what Tom's going to say about this. So exciting. Yeah, it is. Can't wait for him to see this. I'm really excited. I haven't seen it on for 10 years. <laughs> Both couples have managed to find lots of items to sell. Next, I want to find out if there's any hidden treasures buried among them. Coming up, is Caroline about to receive some enlightening news? To see something like this is very impressive, and this is what actually makes the difference in the value. And have Tim and Margaret well and truly scored with some old toys? It always surprises me when this comes to auction how much it makes. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I'm in Croydon where I've been helping our hoarders keep, skip or sell items they haven't seen for years after hiding them away while on the move. With all their possessions sorted, I want to know if there's anything of value in their sell pile. So I've asked our antiques expert Tom Keane to take a look through the items they're willing to sell. With years of experience in the antiques trade, Tom is a practised hand at sorting the trash from the treasure. But how will Caroline's pricey pieces stack up? So, Tom, I've been quite excited about you seeing this lot. How does it grab you? Well, it's all right, you know. <laughs> no, it's some nice things, there's some nice things. What excited you the most when you saw these things? And we'll talk about that. God, I don't, that's a good question. Mm, actually... The screen. Yes, the screen. The screen production. You know, you so often see these in hotels. 
I bought it in Liberties in London. Well, there you are. Well, That's you can... not cheap then, Liberties, for goodness sake. It was a long time ago, and it, it seemed a lot, lot at the money. time. Yes, it would have been a well, lot of money. It's worth two or three hundred pounds for really? a good day. Is that yeah. Sure, you can't yeah, make find space for it. <laughs> well, that's all it's worth. Really? Yeah, yeah. See, uh, uh, mm, this is only the shame. first bit of bad news I've given you. Already, oh, they're on a downer gosh. already. What about something I like now? Yes, on you go. This tray. Isn't it gorgeous? Really? Yeah. So it's about 100 years old, Lake Victoria in this one. Yeah. Lovely mahogany, nice shell inlays into it. Now, what about this? Mm. Now, I was going to say two to three hundred pounds, but look at that. Antique furniture restored and repulse Anderson, Stamford and Ridgeway of 28 Grafton Street, Dublin. Good mm. news. Mm -hmm. Now Gosh. it's worth three to four hundred pounds. Could make five. Wow. Because a good Irish maker on it, Grafton Street, that's just over the Liffey, isn't it? Right yeah, here. Stephen's Green. Stephen's Green. Oh, yeah, down by Stephen's Green. Is that good well posh? Yes, it is. It's the upper end of it. So it's a good thing. Encouraging news for the Butler tree. So what else floats Tom's boat? The Dalton balloon sellers, well, they're Dalton balloon sellers. Mm -hmm. Very common. They um, always were, yeah. Uh, £100 for the two at the moment, the that's, market that's is. That's fine, that's, that's all right. right. That's fine. fine. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Caroline's Georgian table. But Tom's dubious whether the top and legs match. There's an easy way of finding out. Mm. What you do, you measure the uh, top of the table. Now, over the years, an old tabletop will shrink. Yes. Yeah, so it will be a, won't be a perfect circle. Mm -hmm. Or 111 centimetres. Mm -hmm. So if it's a newer top, it'd be the same measurement, won't it? This is 109 centimetres. Oh, that's quite a oh. big difference. That's doesn't, a huge difference. It doesn't really shrinkage. notice, does it? But you can, yeah. The, the, yeah. the tape measure doesn't lie. So we know it's an old top because it's shrunk with age. Right. Does that are. make it more valuable? If I took the auction between four and seven hundred pounds. That's all it'll make. And it'll struggle to get that. That's not bad, that. though. That is oh, so terrible. sad. No, but that's no... no. Not great news, but what about the beloved altar table, which holds all those memories for Caroline? It's rosewood. The nicest thing, I like the carving on the front, that's good quality, but uh, I don't think it's uh, 18th century. I think it's 20th century. Right. Oh, they came to auction, I'd estimated two or three hundred pounds. Oh, oh, right. oh my See, Lord. I told you I shouldn't do it. We know you spent more than that, but mm -hmm. it's better than nothing, isn't it? It is, and it stops if it stops storage costs. Exactly. Caroline has obviously splashed out good money on some interesting items over the years, but the ones Tom thinks will raise an eyebrow or two at auction are the 19th century butler's tray and stand, the reproduction Chinese screen, the rosewood altar table, and a pair of Royal Dalton balloon sellers. Tom also suggested some old military trunks. Lastly, Tom spots a pair of 19th century French gilt bronze chandeliers, but is unsure of a value. He suggests Caroline sees a chandelier expert to get a detailed appraisal and to see if they are of any real value. So I've arranged for Caroline and Tom to meet Matthew Upham, who reconditions chandeliers at his antique shop on London's King's Road. Can he shed some light on the beautiful pieces and see if Caroline will be tempted to sell? I think we've come to the right shop to meet Matthew about uh, your lovely gilt metal chandelier. Matthew, are these sort of chandeliers, the gilt metal or the glass chandeliers, the most popular at the moment? I'd say, more, sadly, more the glass, but these are a little bit rare. I've never seen this type of chandelier, obviously French, um, of this scale. So this is something very important in the current market, as you agreed, Tom, that large chandeliers, they're the business at the moment. They're making the money. Chandeliers come in all shapes and sizes, from the grand to the petite. The world's largest bohemian crystal chandelier is located in the Dolmabash Palace in Istanbul. It has 750 lamps and weighs over four tons. So in what sort of place would the pair of Caroline's French chandeliers have originally been hung? Could have been out in the countryside where there's a bit more forestry around, hence it was this extraordinary sort of technique of casting nature. Um, so you've got these lovely bursting pods of a chestnut tree, gilded, and I would thought ormolu, as opposed to lacquered. So a bit of better quality there. And I'm absolutely amazed by the scale of them. I was expecting something probably about two foot across, which is the norm for metal chandeliers, gasoliers. But to see something like this is very impressive, and this is what actually makes the difference in the value.
Well, this is all sounding very encouraging. So, what are they worth? When I thought they were smaller, I'd have put about 350 each on them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 700 or so. But because of their scale, they could, in auction, make something in the region of about 14 to 1600 pounds on a very good day. I suspect you might get nearer 1200. 1200 pounds for the pair of chandeliers. Could Caroline now be tempted to part with these magnificent pieces? I thought it was fascinating, and uh, price-wise, I'm very happy with what he has suggested they're worth. I think they should just go straight to auction. Good decision, Caroline. A chance to lighten the load and put some pennies in the pocket. We've now come to Chiswick Auctions in West London to see how those chandeliers and the rest of Caroline's items will fare when they go under the hammer. What do you have for sale today? Well, I have the Rosewood altar table. Uh, so you're finally, finally letting that go after finally, all these years. Finally. Oh, and the chandeliers. Mm -hmm. Chandeliers, I hope they go, mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't know. So have you got a figure in your head of what you might come away with today? Oh, millions, at <laughs> the very least. <laughs> but if I don't, I'll be able to upgrade my Oyster card or maybe take a trip to Dublin. Who knows? <laughs> So, does auctioneer Matthew Caddick think Caroline's items will stir up interest today? Caroline's presented us with an interesting mix of items. They're the sort of typical uh, things you'd see walking the door, so very specific to auction houses. A combination of uh, genuine antiques and um, modern decorative. There's things like the Chinese uh, Ming-style altar table. Although not antique, it's certainly of the moment. There's the Sheraton-inspired uh, tray table. Uh, still 19th century, but not Sheraton, but nevertheless a, a good thing and uh, a nice example in good order, um, so there is something for everybody here. The auction's about to begin and the first of Caroline's items to face the bidders is the 19th century butler tray which really caught Tom's eye with a reserve of £300. £200, I'll take 210 in the room. At £200 here with me, 210 there, 220, 230, 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 290. 310. Brilliant, you're over so your reserve. So 300 pounds here with me, take 310 now. 310 there, 320, 330. Oh Still with me there, 320 pounds, take 330 now. At 320 pounds, wow. are we all done and selling it? Oh, they've done well, Good. so have I. You certainly have, Caroline, a great way to start the day. Next up is the double-sided Chinese screen, estimated between two and 300 pounds. 160, 170. On. 180, yes, 190. Yes, 200. Two. At 200 pounds. <laughs> Another bargain. <laughs> Don't start no, with that I attitude. Know. I, know. I doubt that will recoup its cost, but let's hope the altar table, with its estimate of two to three hundred pounds, can do better. <gasps> the table, the table, the table. Oh, Ten there, two twenty, two thirty, two forty, two fifty, oh, two sixty, two seventy, two eighty, two ninety. Somebody wants that table. Okay. All done now, two ninety. That's better than the yes, stick. It certainly is. <laughs> Another £290 to add to the total. Caroline's doing well, with the Royal Dalton balloon sellers raising £75 and the old trunks packing £28 into the kitty. So finally, it's the pair of French gilt chandeliers, one of which, under closer inspection, is slightly damaged. Will they still attract any bids with a reserve of £1,000? Where should we start these? 1,500 estimates. Start me uh, £600 for them. They look fantastic. £600 on bids, 650 £700. Yes. And 50, come on, 800, come on, guys, come on. and 750 pounds on bid, wow. take 800 now. Caroline, that's 750. Amazing. Are we all done it out? Well, sadly, today was not the day, and those chandeliers will be going home with Caroline once again. So, what do you think of the whole experience then? I think it was wonderful. It was wonderful, and it has made me sufficiently embarrassed to get rid of the rest. So what's the long-term plan in terms of the unit? Well, the long-term plan is to get a much, much smaller one. But now that you've set me on the road to freedom from storage, I will complete it all before the next bill comes in to me. Charlie, how likely do you think this is? I think it'll definitely be a smaller size storage, but I suspect storage will be a feature for the next few to five years. Really? I suspect. Yeah. <gasps> and then you no. can take over the storage, cos you'll be doing the same <laughs> Caroline, I would take that as a challenge. I think you should prove her wrong. Oh, I will prove her wrong. It's fine. It's fine. I will do it. Caroline has enjoyed success at auction, selling nearly all her items, and after commission has made £839.96. The 19th century French chandelier she took to the specialist didn't sell this time around. 
but a week later Caroline did sell them at auction, netting her £690. That makes a grand total of £1,529.96. And when she does eventually clear out the unit, she'll be more than £1,300 better off each year. That's brilliant, isn't it? For that is stuff wonderful. that was just sitting there that doing nothing brilliant. apart from costing you money. So I yeah. could buy a short hop flight ticket and yes. and put some money on my Oyster card. So yeah, wonderful. You're in. All sorted, aren't you? It's sorted. So Caroline's well on course to downsizing and jetting off to Ireland with the cash she's made. I just hope this time she can stay away from Dublin's tempting furniture shops. Coming up. Can Tim cash in a high score and find a new player for his pinball machine? I suppose you want to know how much it's worth. And will the bidders be playing ball at auction? 100, 110. Interest, interest. It's done really well. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. Earlier, we saw Caroline Smurfit get on the road to downsizing by finding a new home for some of her long-stored furniture at auction. That's great. It That's is. brilliant. Next up, it's Tim and Margaret Smith, who find themselves taking on temporary storage during a house move. Problem is, six years and 20 grand later, their temporary solution has become permanent and these stubborn storers need sorting. Antiques expert Tom Keane has had a good rummage through their hoard, but is there anything of value to take to auction? Obviously, the jewellery first catches my eye and uh, most of it looks, looks like costume jewellery, doesn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This looks like Victorian rose gold. Have a little look. No marks. They will, they will always mark things, even in Victorian times, and mark it uh, with English hallmarks. Unfortunately, it looks like Victorian rose gold, but it's gold plates. It's a pity. Never mind. <laughs> this costume jewellery will come into the auction in one lot and would make between 50 and 100 pounds a lot. Not a bad start. What other gems has Tom found? Montblanc's a good name. People like these pens. Ballpoint pens, even Montblanc, do better than fountain pens for obvious reasons. We don't like filling them up. We're getting very lazy yeah. as we get more uh, refined. So that's probably 50 or 60 pounds worth. That can Fine. go to auction. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of nice surprises for starters. Any more in store? Is it just this box or is there more underneath here? Yeah, that's just Subutio. Just Subutio? Finding original Subutio teams and accessories in good condition today is becoming increasingly rare and is beginning to reflect in the value. It always surprises me when this comes to auction how much it makes. Oh, cute! They should come to auction and estimate it for that lot, two or three hundred pounds. Really? Sort of yeah, yeah, we do very well with it. I don't know why, but there's plenty of uh, yeah, yeah. boys who like their toys. Are you surprised? I'm surprised that that is worth two to three hundred pounds. I would have said twenty to thirty quid. So yeah, great. That's, nice. awesome. That's a good result, and will hopefully convince these two self-confessed hoarders there is money to be made from selling their hoard rather than spending money storing it. So the items Tom suggests going to auction are the costume jewellery, the Mont Blanc pen and the Subutio set, which has a surprising estimate of two to three hundred pounds. He also thinks the Boy's Skeletric set, an Oriental tea service, a German vase, a Georgian-style silver-plated tea set, and a Compendium game set should also sell. But there's one item I really want to know if Tim is ready to part with. Will he sell the pinball machine if the price is right? It's a late one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I bought it, as I said, in 1993 or four. But Probably an 80s machine, I assume. Yeah, I think it's an 80s machine too. The uh, early 40s, 50s oh, ones. Oh, yeah, it's not it's, yeah, uh, well, a vintage one. Right. Yeah. Which is a pity, because obviously we want things to be vintage, to be more valuable. I'm not the world's leading expert on pinball machines. But I know a man who is, so I've arranged for the boys and the pinball machine to meet Pinball Jeff. He's been buying and selling these machines for years. In the 70s, the arrival of electric pinball machines saw the introduction of digital displays and sound effects. This made them the perfect tool for the entertainment industry as they became associated with comics, cartoons and films. 
Well, Jeff may play a mean pinball, but what does he think of Tim's machine? Isn't in a bad state, has seen slightly better days, but that's not surprising. This machine was made in January 91, and there's about 2,500-ish made around the world of this particular model. Mm -hmm. What's the rarest type of pinball machine? It's interesting what is collectible and what people want. Um, a lot of the, like, the 1950s machines, which are, which are sort of where it really started and pinballs became, as we, as we see them now, uh, with flippers and bumpers and stuff, um, they are beautiful and they're wooden railed and they can go for quite a bit of money because they are quite rare now. Do you think it's the, the advent of uh, computer games you know, television home games that have sort of killed these off. It did. I mean, I've got this museum down in Ramsgate, and what's really interesting is we get kids, literally, who've never seen a pinball machine before. They've seen them on their on their computer. Oh, a real live one. And they love it, because the whole thing about it is that mad mechanical action, the ball flying around. It's much more exciting than a simulation. So, will Jeff make Tim a tempting offer for the pinball machine he's had locked away for the past six years? Are you interested in buying this? Yeah, actually, I would be, um, mainly for the museum, to be honest, because it'd be a lovely one to have. Um, it needs a bit of work on it, but is in, it's all there. So I was thinking about the 550 mark. I'd be happy with that. Would you? Yeah, I've gone no, very quiet. I've, I've gone very quiet. 550, yeah. that's yeah. all right, because... It's, it's, it's a lot more than these, said. So. Yeah. So. Have, we had, have we had a deal at 550? Yeah, yeah I'll be happy with I think you should shake hands and yeah. uh, we're crafting. Fantastic, yeah, yeah that's lovely. Yes! Tim has managed to part with his pinball machine, made some space and scored £550. I had a very good time with Pinball Jeff. He offered me £550 for, his, for my machine and uh, I was very happy with that um, and also very happy that it's going to go to a museum and get used rather than sitting in a storage unit. We've now come to the auction room to see the rest of Tim and Margaret's items go under the hammer. Having spent around 20 grand on storage, I want these self-confessed hoarders to shed their load and recoup some cash to spend on that garden. So you're two of my top hoarders. How are you feeling about actually parting with these things? We're wearing black. <laughs> it's a day of mourning. Poor mourning. Yep. Yeah, OK. But somehow we'll get through it. Somehow you'll get through it. Yes. So have you got high hopes for anything here today? Um, well, um, um, they seem to think the Subutio is going to do well, so. You know, right. I mean, I can't really believe that, but, but if it what's, does, that's great. What's the estimate, can you remember? Two to three hundred. Two to three hundred. Let's see what Matthew, our auctioneer, thinks of the other items Tim and Margaret have brought to sell. Uh, so from Tim Smith, we've, we've been presented with a very eclectic mix of items, but there are all sort of collectible items or interesting items. that High-end brands like Mont Blanc, Dupont, are always of interest in the auction house. The prices aren't crazy and we'll give it our best shot. When it comes to collectible toys, it's a very small collector's niche, but let's find out. OK, so first up is the Mont Blanc fountain pen, which Tom valued at around £50. Let's see if he's right. And I bid £60. I'll take five in the room at £60, £65 there, and £70, £75. That's £70 in front of me. Take five now, £75 there, £80, £5, £90, we're all done and selling at £90 and gone, then £90 your bid, sir. One five. pounds happy with that, yeah. Let's hope the person who gave you that won't be watching. <laughs> That's a great start, almost double the estimate. Next up, let's see if any of the bidders take a shine to the selection of costume jewellery with a reserve of £60. For this quantity lot here, start with £40 for it. It's a lot for the money, isn't it? £40, thank you, and five I'll take. 45 there, 50, 5, 60, oh, oh, 5, oh, 70, oh, oh. 5, 80, yeah, somebody wants five, this. 90, yeah. and 85 pounds in front of me, take 90 now. Are really we all done at 85 pounds then? 85 pounds. 85, that's yes. great. The estimate was 40 to 60, yeah. so it's done really well. 85 pounds is 25 pounds above the reserve, and we're doing well. Time for some fun and games with the compendium set, estimated at 30 to 40 pounds. And interest here with me already at £45. I'll take 50 in the room at £45. Take 50. At £45, 50 there, thank you, and five I'll take. He's hey. beating the commission at £50 and five's next. Still cheap, I think, at £50. And selling at 50 all done good. out. 50. Good. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's good. Happy. Yeah. That's good. Again above Tom's estimate, so Tim and Margaret are on a roll. They also say goodbye to the German vase, the Oriental tea set, the Georgian-style silver tea set and the Skeletric. But we're all anxious to know if that Sabutio is going to score the estimated two to three hundred pounds. Our large collection of Sabutio uh, from the 1970s and 80s. Interest here with me already at 80 pounds. I'll take five in the room at 80 pounds. Take five. 85, 90, five. 
100, 110, yep. 120, That's 130. Interesting. Says now at 120 pounds here on the books, take 130 now. Are we all done and selling that at 120 pounds? Last chance and out, 120. 120. That's good. Yep, that's all right. Good. Well, it didn't quite score its estimated goal, but £120 is a good result. And better still, these top hoarders have managed to sell everything they brought to auction. Fantastic result. I mean, everything went for a little bit more than the reserve, if there was one. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, exactly. we're not taking anything home, so that's very good. It certainly is. Did you buy anything, by the way? No, we didn't. You didn't we buy a good. single thing? No, we're too scared of you. <laughs> good. I'm glad to have that effect. Tim and Margaret have done exceptionally well. They sold all their items at auction, netting £398.36 after commission. Add to that £550 from the sale of the pinball machine and they've made £948.36. So tell me about the whole experience for you. How's it been? It has been good. We've got rid of a lot of rubbish, we've given some stuff to charity, we've sold some things and you have helped us in that and even though you wanted to throw away my Albanian football book, other than that you've been very good. So <laughs> I do, we do appreciate what you've done. I'm so pleased it's worked for you, it's great that you've made some money auction as well, win-win all round. Yep, very good, thank you very much. They may not have cleared out their unit but they have made some cash to put towards their garden and I think the seed has been sown to downsizing their storage in the future. Don't forget to join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.